amici di Cultura Pop, direttamente da Luca Comics and Games 2022, sentite la voce un po' emozionata perché siamo in compagnia di uno dei rappresentanti più amati e più coccolati dai lettori, eh, abbiamo con noi Sibi Sebuschi, editor in chief di, di Marvel. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us here online today. Thank you Sibi, mm. I must confess I'm a little bit uh, emotive in this moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> please, please, please. 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 So just a chat between two fans. Oh, that's definitely true. Yeah. Um, I love one thing you usually say talking about Marvel because it's a, it's a sort of legacy with what uh, Stanley did. Yep. Marvel is the world outside the window. Correct. And today, outside our window, there's a lot of passion, of, of life, of truth. Yep. And that's something we always see in Marvel comics. Yep. So, how you intend the truth in what is Marvel Universe in the comics now? You know, the, the world has changed a lot in the last three years. Uh, for better and for worse, obviously. Uh, there's a, a lot going on in the world, every corner of the world. But like you said, Marvel is the world outside your window, and we have to address these issues. Uh, it's something we've always done. You know, Stan Lee was at the forefront of pushing, you know, socio-political issues, of making sure that the Marvel Universe felt like the real world. It's that realism that makes Marvel so unique. Uh, and it's our job, my job as the editor-in-chief and the, ed the editorial team's job, to live up to that legacy. It's a little more delicate now, though, because of social media and things. Uh, and, you know, there's so much going on in the world that we see it on the news. Sometimes when we turn off the news, we want to forget. So we pick up a comic book, and it becomes escapism for fans. And, but it's still our job to walk that fine line, to make sure that we address the issues, and our creators address the issues, in the proper way through the mouths of our characters and our heroes so people feel that realism but don't go too over the top so they remain entertained you know that's what Marvel's about it's still about the fun you know it's about the heroism the the attitudes of the characters it's about making fans thrill to their adventures while feeling real but it's also they don't it's also our jobs to make sure that they leave feeling entertained like they're they can have a burden off their shoulders from the real world. That the Marvel world, while there's a world outside your window, is also a different world where they can feel comfortable and feel like they're having fun and just, you know, be a kid again in a way. Abbiamo chiesto a CB, lui molto spesso dice che la Marvel è il mondo fuori dalla finestra, che è una frase che era molto cara a Stan Lee. E abbiamo chiesto cosa vuol dire per lui oggi in questo mondo fuori dalla finestra. Lui ha raccontato che è ancora importante eh, portare avanti questo principio che è stato reso forte da Stan Lee è, è un po' la radice di Marvel anche se al giorno d'oggi è un pochino più complicato perché ci sono i social media quindi c'è tutto un diverso modo di, di presentare il mondo però i fumetti di Marvel hanno ancora questa, questa importanza nel, nell'essere attuali e, e soprattutto devono riuscire a creare una sorta di continuità ovvero io posso spegnere il, il telegiornale si dire le brutte notizie, ma posso trovare dei riferimenti del fumetto, ma il fumetto deve rimanere un intrattenimento, un divertimento. E quindi il, il compito, come editor in chief, ma anche quello degli autori, è quello di trovare il giusto equilibrio fra queste due componenti. Um, today, comics are facing a sort of competition with manga. Sure. And uh, your first impact in the comics industry was working with manga. Yes, 25-30 years ago. Yeah. Yesterday. <laughs> Just say yesterday. Uh, in Marvel, you start with Marvel manga. Yes. It's sort of contamination. So, it, mm, I think in Italy is just arrived Demon Days by yep. Beach Momoko. Yep. That's a very strong influence of Marvel Universe and Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. How do you think this sort of contamination can evolve further? You know, there's, a, there's different ways to approach manga that I've learned. So yes, when I started at Marvel all those years ago, we were doing uh, the Marvel Mangaverse, where we had American artists who drew in more of a Japanese manga or anime style tell Marvel adventures. Um, but later, a few years later, we started working directly with the Japanese manga artists, Kiyasumiya, Nihei Stomu from, you know, Glam and Knights of Sidonia. He created Wolverine Snake. So that was us contacting directly with the manga artists making manga in color. But now what we're doing, and it's been very successful for us, is we're working with Shueisha, with Jump and Jump Plus, and we're making uh, manga with the editorial teams at Shueisha, uh, with Marvel characters, so we're working together. 
dual editorial team working with Japanese creators to publish manga first with Jump, and then we bring them back here and we publish them or here. We bring them back to the United States and we publish them in English in the Japanese Tankobon style, and we're finding huge success with that. So there's a market for each and every one. Peach Momoko's Demon Days is a good idea of a Japanese creator coming and telling a Japanese tale at Marvel. And we were just going to keep giving the fans what they want in all areas. I asked the CB what was the rapport with the manga, because CB started, as we said, 25-30 years ago, to work with the American manga in the industry of the American film. It was an editor that was diffused in the American culture. In the American manga, it was always done by the CB, a um, Marvel manga, and now we are coming to what was the exploit exploded with Peach Momoko with Demon Days. We asked what could be the future of this collaboration. E se Bill giustamente diceva, eh, in realtà la, ci sono molti modi di intendere il manga. Eh, inizialmente in Marvel hanno cominciato a provare una strada diversa, ovvero prendere autori americani che interpretavano in una chiave manga i personaggi della casa delle idee. In un secondo momento invece hanno fatto il passo successivo, ovvero prendere autori eh, giapponesi, quindi dei mangaka, e portarli all'interno della casa delle idee. L'esempio era Snicked, che è una storia di Wolverine disegnata da autori di Blaine. Quello che si cerca di fare in questo momento, ci spiegava CB, è trovare un punto di contatto fra due diverse linee editoriali affinché di creare un qualcosa che sia fruibile sia dal lettore americano che si ritrova familiare con i personaggi che con il lettore giapponese che invece ritrova il mezzo. È un po' come fare il manga a colori, ho detto con un'espressione molto azzeccata. If I could add one thing. Uh, we just released a series called uh, Demon, I'm sorry, Demon is, uh, Deadpool Samurai in the United States in Tampawon. And it's become pretty much our best selling Marvel comic collection ever. In America, San Diego ha aggiunto che nella serie del Tanco Bono ha pubblicato una, una, una serie di storie di Deadpool che sta diventando un, uno dei prodotti più, più interessanti, più venuti in questo momento. So, um, I know it's quite difficult this question. How do you see the Marvel Universe and the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, I love them both, obviously, you know, uh, they both exist uh, and they're there for fans to enjoy. Uh, you know, Kevin Feige, who's the producer, huge fan of everything we do. Um, you know, my team, my editorial team, we talk to him uh, and his team pretty regularly. We're very coordinated. You know, Kevin always says, you guys make comics that we're going to produce movies of in five or ten years. Do what you do. There's really no pressure to, to change anything to the cinematic universe, but the writers, the screenwriters, the producers, they have such good ideas that we love to bring some of their ideas from the cinematic universe, from the, the movies or from the Disney Plus shows into uh, the Marvel comic universe. Like recently we started a comic book with Alligator Loki from Loki. We saw, oh my God, that's amazing. Can we do Alligator Loki? And Kevin said, sure, please, you know, do, do a comic version of Alligator Loki. So it's a very synergistic relationship between us because uh, we're both, everyone on the teams are fans of each other's work and we want to work together because that's what's best for the fans. Like two kids playing with both games and they enjoy the time together. Exactly, yeah. Abbiamo chiesto a CD come, come vede lui la, la doppia esistenza fra il Marvel e Universe, fumettistico e il Marvel Cinematic Universe, che è la dimensione appunto cinematografica. Ha detto, adoro tutti e due perché sono un grande fan del lavoro che fa Kevin Feige, che oltretutto... Eh, ci dice sempre, lavorate tranquilli, non sentite la pressione, non vi facciamo pressioni, voi producete i fumetti, noi fra 5-6 anni magari vediamo, prendiamo delle idee, c'è una sorta di, di collaborazione, di, di grande gioco assieme. Faceva l'esempio di Alligator Loki, la, comparso in Loki, la serie su Disney Plus, e loro hanno detto, cavolo, un'idea geniale, dobbiamo portare, e l'hanno fatto, quindi c'è questa sorta di, di, di... è come due bambini, dicevamo, che, che giocano assieme e si divertono. This year, there are a lot of... of uh, of uh, characters in Marvel Comics that turn in important ages. We are Spider-Man with six years, Thor even. Uh, yeah. uh, how you can explain to someone how much importance there is in this evolution in Spider-Man from his first adventures to what he is now? It's interesting you ask that because I would say there's a lot of changes that Spider-Man has gone through in his life. Yesterday, John Romita Jr. said on the panel that we did together, Spider-Man is the same that he was when my dad was drawing him to when I'm drawing him. He hasn't changed. He's still an unlucky teenager. I said, wow, that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, so I think the way you explain it to fans is that Spider-Man, Peter Parker, can be whoever you want him to be. 
People see him in different ways at different periods of their lives. When I was a young reader, I associated with the X-Men more than Spider-Man. I didn't like Peter Parker. But then when I was in high school, I understood, ah, now I understand who Peter Parker is. And then later in life, there are people who understand when Peter's going through different things with his family or with marriaging that they can uh, you know, um, associate with at different periods. So Spider-Man is whoever you want him to be in the comics, in the movies, in the animation. But the thing is at his core, there's with great power, there must also come great responsibility. And what I was saying uh, to some other fans, if you get Doc knocked down, you get back up. Peter is the ultimate guy who's going to overcome his troubles. And he should be, people can use him as an example in their lives to do better and do the right thing and, you know, just be heroic in there every day with other people. I start reading Marvel with X-Men. Yeah, me too. Claremont Run. Yep, me too. And I was around 12. In my ages, uh, um, coming to high school, I start with Daredevil, uh -huh. and I saw a completely different language. Uh, Romita, Daredevil, Miller, yeah. uh, Annocenti. Yeah. That's something that you, that as a reader, when you read these comics, you understand that there's a lot of different notes, of different suggestions. You have an entire universe. You can experience all of your life on different characters. Yeah. And we want you to read and like everything, but you don't have to like everything, just like books or movies. Certain people like certain things, so embrace what you like, and always keep trying, because the, universe, the characters change with the writers, with the artists, with the generation. There is only one character I think that everyone loves in one moment of their lives or another, and it's Peter. Yes. Because Peter and Matt, and Matt Lando, for me, are the most human of all those characters you have in Marvel. And that's probably the, the, the real sense of wonder. Yeah. They are super, but they are extremely human. Human, without a doubt. It's like all Marvel uh, comics or movies. It says Spider-Man, it says Iron Man, it says Captain America. But the stories at their core, why people like, keep coming back, is for Peter Parker, is for Tony Stark, is for Steve Rogers. Abbiamo chiesto a, a CB eh, come si può spiegare a un, un, a un lettore di oggi l'evoluzione di Peter Parker. Peter Parker e Spider-Man compiono 60 anni quest'anno, c'è un grande festeggiamento, abbiamo già un mito, qua a Luca lo, lo incontreremo nei prossimi giorni. E la cosa che diceva lui giustamente è che durante un panel proprio qua a Luca con John Romita abbiamo detto che Peter è rimasto sempre uguale, sempre l'adolescente, è sempre quello che comunque deve affrontare i problemi molto più grandi di lui, il famosetto da super, da grandi poteri, di una grande responsabilità, è, è particolarmente vero con Peter. E, e giustamente si vi diceva, io mi sono reso conto che tutti prima o poi arrivano a conoscere Peter, io inizialmente ho cominciato con l'Xman, poi ho conosciuto Peter, mi sono innamorato di lui, stesso percorso che ho fatto io ho aggiunto anche da Devi. E, e diciamo proprio Peter come Matt Murdock sono probabilmente i due personaggi che hanno dovuto affrontare maggiormente le loro sfide le, nel loro percorso evolutivo pur rimanendo sempre per, per lo più umano One last question Sure What can we expect from Marvel in the next? Mm, I don't want to give away too many secrets to the fans here but um, you know I think We're, at, we're operating in a really good peak of storytelling right now. There's so much amazing things happening. There's so many amazing creators who are at Marvel and who are returning to Marvel, like John Jr. Um, our stories, I think, up until now, there's been a lot of these events. Oh, the world will change. Earth shattering. <laughs> Nothing will be the same. And I think now, especially having been through the pandemic, um, People need smaller stories. They need stories that are more compassionate, that tell things on a smaller scale. And it's still going to have super heroics and, you know, all kinds of Marvel classic action and tropes. But like we talked about Peter Parker and Matt Murdock, we also want to focus on the, the, the smaller stories for a little bit. You know, the character-driven stories, the human stories, the love stories, the friendship stories, the relationship stories. Um, so rather than have big, bold events uh, for the next year, I think you're going to see things are going to be a little bit smaller and contained in the Spider-Man universe, the X-Men universe, the Avengers universe, just to give fans a, a reminder of who these characters are. Not who they're fighting, but what they mean to the everyday people in New York and the everyday people 
uh, on Earth rather than going off to the negative zone and the, the different multiverses and things like that. So we're going to make the stories uh, a little bit uh, focus on the human maybe a little more than the superhuman. Abbiamo chiesto cosa abbiamo provato a rubare, qualche segreto di quello che si aspetta prossimamente in Marvel e giustamente eh, non abbiamo avuto titoli o altro, però abbiamo ricevuto un'indicazione. Eh, le storie vedranno il ritorno di grandi nomi, abbiamo John Romita, ma un altro grande attore del passato del, della Marvel, ma soprattutto verranno presentate storie che saranno un pochino più contenute sull'aspetto personale dei personaggi, non saranno più dei grandissimi eventi, eh, anche in conseguenza della pandemia se vuole cercare di dare un una narrazione un pochino più tranquilla, più pacata, quindi saranno anche molto più focalizzate, molto più specializzate sul personaggio, avremo storie che si esauriranno all'interno dell'universo di Spider-Man, quello di X-Men, ci saranno sempre degli eventi, ma quello che possiamo aspettarci saranno delle storie un pochino più contenute e quindi più tranquille da un certo punto di vista. Sì, thank you for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the fans in Italy, thanks to everybody watching. We love that you embrace Marvel, that you see the movies, that you play the games, that you read the comics. And as long as you keep up with us, we're going to keep providing the best entertainment for you. If you can't jump in, we read Marvel, but you have to come more often in Italy. I'm going to try. Thank you. Grazie mille. Ciao a tutti. Okay. Thank you so much. That was great. Can we get a photo? Sure, of course. Driving me crazy